First thing, I just want to get a little bit of a history on you. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I sent over a bunch of stuff. And yeah. I faxed it, yeah. and I have copies of other stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. What did you write there? Yeah. Let me read it right. <laughs> Let me read from your. Uh, the copy or yeah, the original. I think I have it. Do you want the original? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. This guy was basically listing breweries and semicolon, but uh, my feet get cold really easily, and I think that might have something to do with poor circulation. I'm not sure. It happens quite often. Um. I pick my nose. I've always done this since I was young. Makes my nose bleed every now and again, and then in the winter time, I, I, whenever it gets cold, I notice that it uh, the veins bust, I guess, so that blood starts coming out. Um, I have really oily face skin, like oily skin, skin on my face and my hair. It's really oily. Uh, my last physical, which was in two thousand six, they said slightly high cholesterol. Okay. Um, I faint easily, especially whenever I don't eat or blood is taken from me. I have a good blood, blood high blood pressure. Um, receding hairline, balding, got bald spot. Okay. Uh, and then odors, bad breath, foul gas, depending on what I eat and under alcohol. And then during the winter time, I know some itching over my legs in general. Is that the best one? <laughs> okay. And then what, uh, you said you faint uh, when you get breath, blood drawn, or what was the other thing? Whenever I forget to eat or I don't eat. Okay. Or something like that. Okay. All right. And then uh, sleep. You have trouble getting sleep, staying asleep? Uh, I have trouble getting sleep. Not all the time, but most of the time. Or not even most of the time. Sometimes. 30% time? Uh, yeah, probably so. 30, 25, 30%. Yeah. The back? Back, back pain? I'm sitting certain ways. I'm like, what are you doing? Not, you know, back and uh, like this is good. Oh, and that one's got some power back there. And that one's got some power back there. Oh, it's got some zoom. Yeah, I had to put that. Like floating gas, you still get trouble with that? Uh, every now and again, but mm -hmm. nothing regular, nothing too, too serious. And uh, the legs, rarely? Yeah, whenever I use the bathroom, I notice that it feels like I haven't gotten everything out, and I think it's just the hemorrhoids that are there. Um, I tried a long, a couple of years ago. I tried on a, a, they call them rocket something, the, the suppository mm -hmm. that you put in your butt overnight, and they're supposed to help you feel something. And it didn't, work. It didn't do a thing for me. So it made me wake up feeling like a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Here, let me give you all this. That's the original and then the facts that okay. we got sent you. Okay, good. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know if you want to uh, look at the non faxed version of it, yeah. maybe a little easier to read. <laughs> but that was a hair analysis my aunt did yeah, for me last year. She's a nutritionist. Okay. I just never had any sort of interpretation of it because she okay. lived in Atlanta. Yeah. Which is a host business. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, well, let me go over. Uh, and then there's also my last physical, which was two years ago. The last two pages or so. Blood work. Yeah, blood work. Okay. And that's. And this is the papers they gave me about cholesterol and some fun stuff you have already seen. Other stuff they kind of gave. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of dietary stuff in here. I don't know if, uh, if it's that or not. <laughs> okay, well, let me, uh, let me tell you what we found out. Okay, yeah. Start with the ear analysis, and I'll go over your blood work from two years ago and uh, hair analysis. Okay. The uh, first part of the urine test lets us know how well you're digesting your food, absorbing your food, and mm -hmm. uh, how toxic your liver may or may not be. You're digesting about uh, uh, about eighty percent. Right? That's not too bad. That's that's probably pushing it. I mean, there's probably less than that on a good day when you're when you're resting or eating. Stress, so I wouldn't say you digestive is a big deal with you. Mm -hmm. I do think everybody could use enzymes. That's because we, the cooked foods we eat, and stress brings them. So right. I just think uh, lifelong, even once we're healthier, if we're in an event, I think everybody should be in enzymes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, liver, uh, not real bad. And here again, to your credit, uh, your age is in your favor, but I've seen a lot worse. Uh, Let me also state that the night before this was my wife's birthday. We yeah. went out to eat. Yeah. I did have a glass of wine. I don't know if yeah. that was this afternoon. No, you okay. can't change it that fast. So. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> but it does need a little spring cleaning, but it's said it, uh, you know, we're not, uh, not extremely toxic. But, okay. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Great. Um, and then we, as far as uh, water and intake, uh, assuming that collection was an average, uh, I'm getting that sense, the amount that you collected, the typical 24-hour uh, output. Yeah, probably so, I'd yeah. say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's adequate, I mean, more, more than adequate. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're pushing the water. You don't need to. Oh, I drink this water. Uh, but, I mean, some people just kind of obsessive because they've got to just drink tons and tons. And right. Yeah. You can actually overdo it and, and wash out some good stuff, and you're kind of on the edge of that. Okay. And also, as you start eating more fresh and raw, and you get your other eating. Yeah. You get low, but uh, yeah, that, that's even put more water in. So, okay. So if you've got an obsession about it, let it go. <laughs> okay. I thought I wasn't drinking enough. Yeah. I, well, you're, I'm good. You're okay. almost double it. Really? Yeah. Ideal. Okay. And what, what would be ideal? Just give me a... Uh, well, in uh, milliliters, it's 1,600 to two, 2,000 mLs. Mm -hmm. You can convert that. I'm not sure what that is, but you know, internet convert right there. Right, okay. Uh, so, yeah, about 1,600 to 2,000. Okay. Um, okay. Then, uh, the second part of our test was looking at nutrient levels mm -hmm. and, and the things that you were... Uh, deficient in uh, first one's calcium, magnesium. We, we really talk about those together as your, your buddy. Mm -hmm. And calcium, magnesium. There's there's not a function in the body that's, that they're not either directly or indirectly involved with. So everything is less efficient, and existing problems are even more uh, more exaggerated in, as a result. But we think of calcium, magnesium. We think of muscles and joints. But I mean, you name it. They're somehow involved. Mm -hmm. uh, in looking at some of your, you know, conditions that where calcium might be so directly uh, involved would be uh, would be uh, sleep. Uh, again, that's not a big deal with you, but when you think about sleep, the body doesn't sleep; the brain does. Mm -hmm. And so, that in order for the brain to enact the sleep program, it's got to have plenty of calcium and magnesium. Mm -hmm. and, and because you're kind of the number's not real low. It, it's probably the, the days you're more stressed uh, is going to be the days you're going to struggle to sleep because the stress burned up extra calcium that's not available for the sleep people mm -hmm. at night. Okay. All right. And you know what? Now that I think about it, probably why that this particular night that I had bad sleep 
the night before was my wife's birthday was I drank a cup of coffee at dinner Ooh. and that that kept me out yeah. like man right. so yeah um, and then the vitamin C was mm-hmm. pretty low and that's uh, of course everybody thinks immune system but it's it's a key player for uh, energy production we use it for joint health I think where it's hurting you is uh, you've got uh, one of the things we've also learned in, in the testing of hair and also uh, some of the symptoms you've listed You've got some fatigued adrenal glands, and uh, vitamin C, uh, adrenal glands like vitamin C. And what are the adrenal glands? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, everybody knows about them for emergency, fight or flight. Maybe. Right. Adrenaline. And uh, they, but in normal physiology, they have a lot to do with metabolism, much like uh, the thyroid does. It's helping those cells uh, sort of fuel in. The, the metabolism, but one of the one of the ways it's hurting you is uh, the adrenal glands in normal physiology tell the heart how much pressure to push the blood out with, not how fast to be, but how much pressure. So when you're lying down, it's the heart relax, stand up, sit up, no more pressure because you've got gravity pulling, right? Mm-hmm. So when you get stressed. Um, the adrenal glands should just kick in a little more and say, heart, you need some more blood to get to the brain and the muscles because we've got some kind of stress. But what happens is your adrenal glands just take a nap. Mm. <laughs> so that's why you think. And that's why I think. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So it's not a heart problem. Right. The heart's fine. So Good. I'll get the message. <laughs> right. Okay, so vitamin okay. C is, uh, is very key for that. Uh-huh. Um, and that also has a lot to do with the, the cold extremities, the cold feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the adrenal glands are not telling the heart to get circulation out. And, and you, you say it kind of varies, it's not constant. So some days your adrenal glands are more rested, depends on what happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's usually not the, uh, depends on how bad the stress is. Here's a, here's a good analogy. If you're, uh, if you're running a race and your body has what it takes to get you to the finish line, it'll get you there and then you pay the price. Mm-hmm. In other cases, you run out of energy during the race and faint during the race and, mm-hmm. and pass out. So that's like when you get your blood drawn. You know, there's just there's not enough energy for the adrenals to help you cope with that. Mm-hmm. In other cases, you might have a rough day at work yesterday, and today you're paying the price, cold feet or just a little light headache. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Um, so vitamin C will help that out, and then okay. uh, the, we also we checked the liver for um, we did a number of tests on it, but one was specifically for how well is it processing fats. And it's one thing to not eat the fried foods and you're going to put the good fats in there, but they still have to be converted to a usable form, and that's the liver's job. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's, that's where your liver's got its biggest problem right there. Now, that's, again, fixable if you get it cleaned out. Mm-hmm. But that, that certainly will affect your cholesterol level. The liver's what regulates cholesterol. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Secondly, when, the, when the, you're eating good fats but the liver's not converting them, then we don't have enough fats to go around. So the body has to make some decisions. Who's going to get what we do have? Mm-hmm. And there's a definite pecking order. The skin is the first to get cut from the budget of most people. Mm-hmm. Or there's some kind of imbalance in how the oil is distributed. Like your, your face is, scalp is oily, but the rest of you are not. So you just, just can't regulate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here again, we're back to the liver uh, on that deal. Okay. And then um, the B complex is, um, is the, uh, the, the last major one. That's what all all I focus on is the biggies. uh, And B vitamins have a lot to do with energy production, a lot to do with liver uh, health and how well it functions. Uh, Nerves, yeah, can affect those and strain deficiency. Mm -hmm. So when we we look at that and then your blood work and, you know, it's two years old but still couple things we can pick up on here. Mm-hmm. We already talked about your blood fats, but um, um, here we go. one of the measurements here where they measure the red blood cells, they, 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 they take about eight different measurements, six different measurements on the red blood cells, and that's to determine different types of anemia. Mm-hmm. And one of your readings was actually a little bit high. And that's a B12 deficiency, which we found in there. So that's still going. And B12 has a lot to do with energy, but in the long run, it affects our cardiovascular uh, health. 
Okay. Well, you know, we're not worried right now, but but that's not a good combination to have low B12 and, and high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that was the only thing that I saw in the blood work that was uh, an issue. Okay. And then um, on the uh, hair analysis, mm -hmm. uh, You don't have any really toxic, a uh, little bit of arsenic, but it was barely there. Mm -hmm. your, your ratios, I mean, you did have some of the normal minerals were a little bit high. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they do some comparisons where they kind of put them in ratios and see if, but none of them were out of balance. They're all in acceptable range, so that's good. What, uh, let me tell you a little bit about hair analysis. Um, okay. I've, I've done it in years past, used to do quite a bit of it, and I finally I couldn't get some answers, so I just quit doing it. I mean, still look at it. And I think where it probably has most values with the, the toxic minerals. It's not the other minerals. The reason here's some of the answers that no one's been able to answer for me. Um, we know the hair is living. It's it's a. Uh, but what we don't know is what are we seeing in the hair? Is it is it current history or is it what happened three months ago? Uh, you know, of course, we could take a sample every three months and figure that out. <laughs> you know, maybe, but uh, so that's or is it something uh, the body has too much of, or you know why? Why is that? Why are those minerals there? Is that mm -hmm. something they're supposed to be? So there's just some there's some areas of uh, I don't don't feel comfortable basing a whole diagnosis on it. All right, you know, and that goes for pretty much any test we do here in the clinic. We we try to do a variety of things to overlap. You know, right, right. Uh, and then um, probably the, the day that the thing that broke the camel's back with me and hair analysis was I sent in a, a sample uh, from the same guy uh, from the hair and, and scalp and pubic. Mm -hmm. We got completely different readings. And when I called the company, they didn't have an answer. I said, well, we have to do a shampoo. They said, no, it shouldn't. He said, yeah, I wouldn't think it would. Right. So I was like, well, okay. And it was a reputable company. They're still around. This yeah. Is, this is, 15 years ago. So, right, right. So it's, it's yeah. not that I say it's of no value. It's, it's, it's one of those things where we don't, that we know exactly how to interpret. Right. But I do think the toxic minerals, uh, those, those certainly have value. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, right. and you look real good there. Good. Okay. Excellent. Now, as far as uh, your symptoms, some of them I've already talked about. Let me just go through the rest of them. Okay. Talk about cold feet. Um, people who uh, bruise easily or they have bloody noses get easily, um, that's a vitamin C deficiency. The uh, integrity or the strength of, of the capillaries and blood vessels is determined largely by vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to have some vessels that are or capillaries that are pretty close to the surface there in the lower layers, and they're getting dry weather, that makes them even more closer. Mm -hmm. Smooth the thing down, it's dry furniture, and they're doing some mechanical <laughs> irritation, and it doesn't take much, you know. Right, right. So as we get the uh, get the vitamin C back in, and your skin uh, more balanced with the fats, that should really help okay. with that. Um, and then. You talked about now hair loss. Um, sometimes that's a trace mineral problem, or some of the other minerals, mm -hmm. uh, and and or fatty acid, which is back to the liver again. Mm -hmm. So what we'll just have to see as we get down the road is, you know, if that's doing better. There there is a genetic deal that I, you know just can't seem to get around it. Right. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll just have to see. Okay. Um, And then I talked about uh, the fainting. Uh, now, uh, body odor and halitosis are almost always uh, another reflection of liver. And mm -hmm. I know there's people who you could say, well, some, you know, my buddy's got a far more toxic liver, but he doesn't have that problem. Well, he's not getting away with the toxic liver, it's just not showing up in those ways. Mm -hmm. and a, lot of the, a lot of it is genetically determined. Mm -hmm. You can go line up 10 people who give them all toxic liver. Have ten different manifestations. Right, right. Okay, that makes now that, sense. And that probably will get worse as we start detoxing. Because mm -hmm. you're getting, getting rid of it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I did tell people to, uh, you know, this, uh, oh, parsley is a pretty good 
you know, for breast freshener, you can buy dried uh, with actual licorice, uh, not licorice clove, mm -hmm. actual clove, uh, little spice, you know, okay. and chew on that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to be mints because they got sugar. Let's see. And then also, uh, as far as body odor, the um, you know, cologne, uh, antiperspirants are, are awful. They've got uh, aluminum sulfhydrate, which basically it's a toxin, uh, so the body closes off the pores to keep it from coming in. Right. Well, when you're supposed to sweat. Yeah, well, you know, some of it's going to get in. So, uh -huh, right. So uh, at the health food store, there's a, something called a crystal stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It works pretty good. And then you just take regular cologne and just spray it on your on your shirt. So because that alcohol can burn the skin and right. irritate it as well. So just spray it on your shirt itself. Well, one thing that my aunt uh, told me about for the underarm odor is uh, is a homemade deodorant that I don't know where she got it from, mm -hmm. but it's uh, cornstarch, olive oil, baking soda, and like peach oil and kind of mm -hmm. oil. And that seemed to work yeah, pretty well. I don't see a problem with that. So. Yeah. Just a matter of yeah. keeping it to right. where it stays throughout the day, the day yeah. which it, it does pretty well with. Yeah. I must say. So. <clears throat> uh, and then sleep. Now, if you're having trouble going to sleep, just get up and pop a couple of the calcium supplements I'm going to recommend. Mm -hmm. Chew them up and then uh, maybe a glass of juice to get a glucose in there. That usually helps you get to sleep. Okay. Um, Hemorrhoids are, uh, they, there's exceptions to this, but most of the time it's due to the liver. Mm -hmm. All the veins from the lower bowel uh, join together into one big vein called the portal vein. Okay. And that goes into the liver. Mm -hmm. And then from and once it gets to the liver, it splits down the capillaries again. And then on the other side of the liver, they all join back up and, and it goes back to the heart. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Now, <clears throat> the reason that they go back to capillaries that goes through the, to the uh, liver is we absorb uh, the small intestine, we absorb uh, uh, fats, proteins, well, everything except minerals. Mm -hmm. The minerals are absorbed in the large bowel. Mm -hmm. So those have to be dropped off the liver because that's a food processing plant. So that's the reason that they go, that portal vein goes back to capillaries to distribute the, the, the minerals. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, if the liver gets congested, then the blood doesn't flow through there as efficiently. Mm -hmm. So the blood's pu the heart's pumping the blood out at a certain rate, it's not flowing back at the same rate, so it backs up and those, those veins in the lower bowel is where it happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Okay. And that, the reason I mention that to you is, uh, yes, eventually the hemorrhoids can go away as you get the liver cleaner, but sometimes during the cleansing process, It'll actually flare up on you because the body's dumping all the stuff from the liver mm -hmm. and get rid of it, please. And it's, mm -hmm. I can't handle it all. all. Right. I mean, it doesn't shut the liver down. It just makes it a little less efficient. All right. So, right. Um, what you can do if that does happen, um, uh, uh, you take a regular potato uh -huh. and just cut uh, cut a piece out of the size suppository and pick it up there and. Two or three times a day, it has an astringent that so kind of helps you to shrink and take some of the pain away. Okay, that doesn't cure it, but at least it's right. Gives you some relief. Right. Yeah. Well, the I no, first noticed them whenever I was like fourteen years old, so mm -hmm. it's twelve years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, it was really painful, and I can remember the next day after I figured out what it was, I went to a roller coaster on the roller coaster, and it was really painful to sit and whatnot, and yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Throughout the years now, it's kind of subsided, doesn't know pain anymore. It's mainly just whenever I make a bowel movement that I notice they're there. Sure. And sometimes it's a little uncomfortable, so I try to stick my finger and just push them back up. Because they're internal, and then I guess they come out. Yeah, they come out too. Uh, and, uh -huh. They, uh, you know, if you have, if you're not having regular bowel movements, I have a tendon exaggerating. Because now we've got mechanical pressure on them in your patients. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you know, if you, if you don't have regular bowel move, function habits, you're going to need to establish something. What do you, what do you well, do? twice a day at least, you know, okay. like after, and see, when you eat a meal, that's really what triggers the whole mechanism for bowel movement, so mm -hmm. that's the best time to go sit on the top, mm -hmm. and if you're not in the habit of doing that, you can actually train the issue itself, so as mm -hmm. soon as you eat, 
you know, that, that seems a little sit and strange is to just a bit, you know, go, go pop a blood vessel. All right. But it's kind of encourage that. Mm -hmm. You can actually um, train your body. So. Okay. Well, I definitely noticed that after I eat breakfast, I do a bowel movement because yeah. I try to eat a high fiber cereal mm -hmm. every morning. Um, and that I don't. I guess that helps push it along. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But it, it's only usually that one time during the day. Maybe every now and again I'll, I'll do one at night. Okay. Well, that hopefully will change as we get we get more fruits and vegetables. But you really right. The ideal, the old nature paths, and I tend to agree, that is uh, every time you eat, you have a bowel movement. Mm -hmm. So three times a day. Yeah, ideally. So, yeah. But twice would be great. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I forget about lunch too, and that's why you yeah. see candy bars and all that yeah. for lunch. So, so there's your original back yeah. on that. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to the uh, the recommendations, the the diet part of the program, um, where I can, when there's a family or a couple involved, mm -hmm. try to use the same diet just to make life easier for them. And there's really no, uh, nothing unique about you. I mean, if you're diabetic, you'd have to have a different program in your life. So right. And then your supplements uh, will be unique with you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't easier recommend a supplement for everything we talked about. I just that's why I look at the test. Of, okay, what are the major issues? Mm -hmm. The minor issues will be taken care of by virtue of just eating better, your diet somewhat better, your diet works better. Mm -hmm. So right. And then. The goal is as we get down the road, um, start weaning off of those and ultimately end up with a multivitamin and, a, and digestive enzyme. That's mm -hmm. where we're heading. Okay. 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 Cool. So what uh, what uh, supplements are you going to put me on? Just to uh, we'll start off with, well, I got the enzyme and then I'll do it for your liver. Okay. A supplement for that. And you need some calcium, magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, also... Um, Going to do something for adrenal support. Uh, we use they're, they're called uh, uh, metabolic enzymes. Mm -hmm. um, there's digestive enzymes and there's di there's enzymes that run our cells. Mm -hmm. And we can we can prescribe. They're not drug. They're, they're they actually come from cows. They're good, <laughs> but they're just the enzymes. They're not the protein. They're not the meat. They're not the fat. It's just the enzymes, which is just pure protein. Mm -hmm. And and uh, even though they're from cow, when we take them in, we can target any tissue we want, you know, kidneys, heart, liver, adrenal. Mm -hmm. And so that they, what an enzyme does, it doesn't stimulate and it doesn't replace like a hormone would, mm -hmm. but it lubricates. And so when a tissue is sick or overworked, it's at least missing adequate enzymes. Mm -hmm. And so certainly there's more to the you know, health of a cell than just enzymes, but that's a, the major key part of it. Right, right. So okay. yeah, that, that, um, we do that for a while, and that just kind of gets gets them up and running and, and back off the road. So. Okay. Yeah. As far as diet, uh, what would you like to see, uh, you know, to, uh, to start with, I guess you could say, that might be different from what my wife does? I don't think anything. I'm trying to think if I, I don't think we did anything. I'll, I'll give you a, a diet sheet, and you can kind mm -hmm. of compare notes with hers. Okay. But, but in theory, you guys should be, you know, we tested her allergies, right? I don't know if y'all did an allergy test or not. Yeah. I can't remember. We put it on the computer. That would be the only difference. That I, if, if we did check her allergies, mm -hmm. the food that we said avoid. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, it should be the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you about acne. I don't get it too often, but every now and again, I'll get a big, right. big old cyst type thing, and or you know, one or two will pop up over here. What causes acne? Where does it come from? And why do I get these big ones? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's because the uh, skin is being asked to eliminate some toxins mm -hmm. that the liver can't deal with, mm -hmm. and when it, when it does, it targets the core of the uh, of, of the sweat on the sweat gland, so that's the oil oil gland. Mm -hmm. The oil gland keeps making oil, but it can't escape. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of pools up in there, and then you get uh, bad bacteria move in, stagnant, mm -hmm. and white blood cells move in, mm -hmm. and this big, that's what pus is. Okay. And so when you get them, uh, you know, just kind of analyze, have I gotten off the program, or 
you know, stress can do it too because stress robs energy from the liver. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to get a, for other reasons as well, get a loofah. You get that mm -hmm. in? Yeah. You can just use that in the shower and scrub. I wouldn't use it in the face, but. If one of those puff things, would that, would that be adequate? Or can I get like a hard? Yeah, loofah is hard to get. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And that just stimulates the skin to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, uh, acne doesn't have anything to do with what you eat? Well, it does. As so, so I said, it's just the liver. If, you, if you're poisoning your liver, then the liver can't filter. So it says, skin, can you help me out? So the skin oh, okay. becomes a leaf valve. And okay. other people, it might be sinuses. Somebody else might be going. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay. okay. So it's mainly more about the food you eat taxing your liver mm -hmm. and then that having to yeah. give it out to the skin. Yeah. I got you. Okay. And then here again, in the cleansing, even though I have eating better, why well, I'm getting acne, but you're, you're cleansing at a rate faster than the liver can handle. So right. <laughs> it's, just, it's not a problem, it's just that's just the fact. Yeah, that's just how it works. And then what about big cystic acne? With the well, it's just more of the same. Yeah. More of the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I think that's it. Okay. Well, head up front and I'll... Uh, Maybe you'll have your recommendations out to you in just a second. Okay, okay. great. Fantastic.